Hello students, I am Damini and I am going to today present you the second part of soils on behalf of personal tutors. We have already discussed about alluvial soil which existed within this region that means the Indo-Gangetic Plains region. It was the alluvial soil that we discussed in the last uh, series. We also discussed that this alluvial soil occupied areas here in the coastal region. They were known as the uh, in the peninsular region and also uh, in the deltas of the rivers. This part we have already discussed that this was the part of alluvial soil which was known as the inland alluvium. The region where the alluvium soil is inside in the land inland alluvium formed by the rivers which flow down the Himalayas. The rivers which flow down the Himalayas as they come down they deposit their silt on the banks of the rivers along the Ganges. Along the Brahmaputra river here the, over this region surrounding the Brahmaputra region also we find the alluvial soil. And then we said that the alluvial soil is also found in coastal region along the coastal strip by the action of tides. Here it is because of tides. And then whatever is the silt brought down by the rivers flowing through the black soil region or through the lava region was deposited at the deltas of Mahanadi and the rivers in the southern India. So this was called as deltaic alluvium. Now we now today are going to discuss about the second type of soil. This was one of the soils, alluvial soils was one of the soils which occupied 40% of the area and the next one maybe an important one is the black soil which is also a very fertile soil as the alluvial soil but it occupies only 16% of the total grown area or the total land area. Uh, this soil, the black soil is also known as regur soil or in Telugu they also call it as reguda. The color of the soil is black because it is flowing through this volcanic region. This particular region prior um, some millions of years ago this region was a volcanic region the lava erupted here and the consolidification of that lava has resulted into the formation of rocks and now these rocks are disintegrated these rocks are disintegrated and forming into soil so it was few million years ago that this region was having volcanoes here and that is why the soil is said to be of volcanic origin. You need to remember the soil of volcanic origin is the black soil. Now because it is getting formed in the region where we find the black, uh, where we find the lava rock, therefore we are calling the soil as a residual. We are saying it is a residue, a remain of the uh, lava rock. Whatever is disintegrating from the <coughs> rock is getting deposited here itself and we are calling it as a remain of the lava rock and we are saying it, it is a residual soil. We also said in the first series that there is a soil called as in situ soil. That means that the in the site itself the soil is formed and again if we look at the black soil it is in the site of the rock itself that the soil uh, the soil is formed and we are calling it as in situ soil so we are <coughs> calling the soil as residual soil we are calling the soil as in situ soil and because cotton is one of the main crops which grows very well in this soil it is also called as black cotton soil. So regur soil, black cotton soil, residual soil. Uh, if they ask you give an example of in situ soil, 
then again a black soil. The found mainly in Deccan Trap region is of volcanic origin. Now very important characteristic of this soil, why it is being considered to be a very fertile soil is because it is moisture retentive. This is basically a clay soil. It has high percentage of clay. So because of this high percentage of clay, the particles are, the soil particles are very fine. And as a result of which, they stick to each other when it rains. So it has the capacity to retain the moisture. Almost in every season, the soil has the capacity to retain moisture. And that is why at times it, dry farming is also done on this soil because of this property of retaining moisture. So the first thing is it is a moisture retentive soil and what happens because of this moisture retention is that the soil expands when it is wet. So as a result of that it is difficult to till the soil. It's difficult to till the soil because it expands and that is why it is immediately after first rain that the soil is being tilled. They mainly ask you the question why is black soil tilled after the first rain? Why do we need to till it after the first rain? It is because it expands when it is wet because of which it has moisture retentive capacity and it is difficult to run the plow on this wet soil in this expanded soil but that also has an advantage that it brings it makes it more fertile second property is that it is a self plowing soil when we say self plowing we mean to say during the dry season the soil develops it dries up and it breaks so you will find that soil is at places having deep cracks like this it has dried up and developed deep cracks so because of in the dry season it <coughs> develops deep cra cracks <coughs> the air can move in easily and it is also called a self aerating property the soil has self aerating property or we are also saying that the self soil has self plowing property it tends to develop deep cracks and it tends to take in air inside till deeper depth the next property that we look into the fertility of the soil is that it is rich in minerals it's a soil rich in lime iron magnesium calcium alumina and potash so it's a very rich soil as far as the mineral constituents are con concerned and that is how this again makes it a very fertile soil now we are saying it is rich in lime iron magnesia calcium alumina potash but then it is deficient in nitrogen it is deficient in phosphorus and it is deficient in humus because it is getting formed here itself it is deficient in nitrogen phosphorus and humus uh, another very important characteristic which makes it a very fertile soil it is very deep it's being formed at one place and that is how it is a deep soil especially in the region of Narmada and Tapi especially in this region the soil is very very deep so these are the three, three and four main characteristics which make the soil to be a very fertile soil <coughs> it's of lava rock lava origin therefore rich in iron oxide and therefore black in color and expands when tilled in dry season develops cracks uh, cotton is the main crop that is grown on this soil. Along with cotton, there are other important crops which are grown. Sugar cane, we have wheat, we have. But then cotton is the main crop that is in, in regions of Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. It is also the sugar cane where it is. Sugar cane is also grown. States, now if you look at this map, 
the map is based mainly on the rivers so if you look at this map this soil is mainly found in the states of madhya pradesh maharashtra parts of karnataka and andhra pradesh so main two states that we need to look into is is uh, madhya pradesh and the um, maharashtra so these are the two important states where this soil is formed encircling this whole soil region surrounding this whole soil region is the red soil if you look at red soil it practically encircles the entire this region a uh, red soil is mainly a sandy soil sand is more as compared to clay <clears throat> uh, formed by the weathering of ancient crystalline and metamorphic rocks the ancient uh, crystalline we have read about metamorphic rocks the rocks formed by the intense heat and pressure so these are gneiss is a metamorphic rock the parent rock here being gneiss and granite so these are the two main um, parent rocks here from these rocks this red soil is formed and then it occupies 10% of the total um, land area total area that it occupies is 10% and this region if you are seeing this is the eastern part is an area of poor rainfall this side the direction southwest monsoon has its direction so the region this region receives heavy rainfall but as compared to this this is a region of poor rainfall and as a result this is the soil that is being formed here <clears throat> the color is again red because of a presence of iron ox oxide this soil is not a very fertile soil it's not a very fertile soil but then it responds to the fertilizers Uh, gives a good response to the fertilizers uh, rice being one of the important crops that is being grown on this a uh, local millet in this region known as ragi is also grown in this red soil region <clears throat> this soil is considered to be good for dry farming now when we say dry farming what do we mean there are certain crops say for example ragi and millets which really do not require much rainfall much water for their growth so in such type of for such type of crops it is called as dry farming giving the soil a certain amount of fertilizers and with little less rainfall also the production of the local millet is good so this region the red soil region is the one where <clears throat> dry farming is being practiced it's a sandy soil that means it is porous soil is porous because it is a sandy soil it is a friable soil which means that that it can be easily broken the soil can be easily broken porous friable these are being friable is a disadvantage of this soil it's an disadvantage that it's a friable soil <clears throat> now this soil was formed in regions of poor rainfall we have the third category of soil that is the laterite soil now this soil is formed by the process of leaching when i say leaching i mean to say that it is form formed in regions of heavy rainfall it's a monsoon because of the monsoon it's formed in regions of very heavy rainfall the word laterite is means brick it is brick colored and its important property is that that it is used for building materials when the soil dries up it becomes so hard that it can be used for building materials now you need to know what exactly is leaching uh, if you look at the soil profile that we dealt with in the first 
lecture we said that the topmost layer is the soil top soil which is the one which is important from the point of view of agriculture what <coughs> really happens in the case of laterite soil is that that due to heavy rainfall the important bases here percolate down to the lower layers the water dissolves the base in the soil and brings it down to the lower layers so what remains here is the acidic nature of the soil the soil tends to become acidic and because of this acidic nature it tends to become less fertile though it responds to the fertilizers and certain crops are now being grown in this particular soil but then it is acidic by nature because of heavy rainfall the bases percolate down now it is formed in regions of extreme temperatures and with alternate wet and dry season with alternate wet and dry season the salts are pulled up and then they again are percolated down because of the heavy rainfall and that is how the soil tends to become acidic in nature uh, if you look at in the in map of india this is found in regions where the rainfall is very heavy so we have the regions western ghat and the western ghat side where the rainfall is very heavy around about 200 cm in the monsoon season this is the region where the soil is found or we say in the summits of the eastern ghats summits when we say that means that it is the peak of the mountain the peak of the mountain receives heavy rainfall because of which the laterite soil is formed over here so it's not formed in a continuous layer like this it's not formed in a continuous layer but in patches and we are saying it is formed on the summit so here also just below this river where we have chirapunji and where the region is getting very heavy rainfall it is in this region just below the narmada river just below the brahmaputra river sorry brahmaputra river in this region is the laterite soil just below this in the brahmaputra region is the laterite soil <coughs> Uh, soil which is not considered to be very uh, good from the point of view of agriculture uh, but then nowadays at present i mean with the advance of technology they have started growing cashew nut on the soil cashew nut and tobacco these are some of the crops which are being grown on the soil with the fertilizers and with the rest, with the, the help of fertilizers these crops are being grown on this particular soil <coughs> the third category now look at if you look at the map of india when you are doing the map work you need to remember the rivers through which we need to demarcate the rivers beyond which we need not demarcate a particular soil so when you look at the map you will find this black soil a slightly above river narmada but <coughs> it does not come below this river here krishna below this it does not come little bit over here this soil so you'll have to remember this it's partly in the region of mahanadi it's crossing partly the region of mahanadi Uh, do not shade it particularly beyond this region the laterite soil has to be shown in patches like this they sometimes ask you the laterite soil main question asked is laterite soil in northeast india a very important question often repeated so you have to remember this region very important one if they ask you laterite soil in um, eastern region then you have to make it in patches over here western region a patch over here if they ask you below tropic of 
cancer the laterite soil below tropic of cancer then you mark it here above tropic of cancer it is about this the northeastern region similarly we have the alluvial soil which is being asked about tropic of cancer and below tropic of cancer below tropic of cancer you will mainly mark it as a region in the coastal belt or you can make it in the region and the deltaic region you can make it if they ask you red soil so this whole region is this region till certain limits is the alluvial soil but then if they ask you red soil this whole region encircling leaving aside the laterite soil the whole region encircling the black soil region is the laterite is the red soil <coughs> remember this because we always have one question pertaining to soils in the map work also so you have to be very careful in marking one region pertaining to soils in the map work this is also again a region of black soil so we have done mainly four main soil types alluvial soil and black soil are the considered to be the very fertile soils you'll have to remember the soils which are very fertile alluvial soil and black soil the soil which occupies the largest area 40% is the alluvial soil second important one is the black soil you have to remember the soil which is acidic in nature and does not respond i mean does not um, good from the point of view of agriculture is the laterite soil a soil which is used for building material is again the laterite soil so you'll have to remember some of these points red soil we have said deficient this will be a disadvantage of that deficient in nitrogen humus and phosphorus and response to fertility soil which is good for dry farming is the red soil you might as well as dry farming it is also considered as the black soil which is uh, can retain moisture remember the reasons for the fertility of black soil and the alluvial soil we now look into the soil erosion being an important component so we look into soil erosion and what are the factors which cause soil erosion as well as how to control soil erosion so we have next part immediately after this in this chapter is the soil erosion now what do we mean by soil erosion we have to understand the meaning of soil erosion we have to understand what are its types and agents of soil erosion as well as what are the methods of controlling soil erosion and some of the regions <coughs> where soil erosion is predominant now when we look at speak about soil erosion it is the removal of the top soil in the removal of top soil it is carried away either by wind or it is carried away by water so removal of top soil which makes it infertile for agriculture we have set soil profile we had discussed and we are saying this is the top soil this top soil does not have any vegetation this is not there it may have become because of uh, the construction work it might have become because of there may be certain factors why the trees have been cut down why the vegetation has been removed and because of that the soil tends to become loose and then when it drains this top soil tries to flow away with the water so there may be many reasons why this region is devoid of this vegetation 
there is no vegetation which can hold the soil uh, together the roots of the plants are not uh, surviving there to hold the soil together because of which the soil gets flown away either with water or when it rains heavily the soil gets blown away so this process is called as soil erosion which is a main problem creating degradation in agriculture so we need to know what is soil erosion and what are the agents there are mainly two agents we also have a man water and wind are the two main agents um, man is also contributing a lot but then the two main agents of soil erosion are water and wind now we try to look into the soil erosion from perspective of water now when we see the in terms of water we mainly deal with three main types of soil erosion that is rill erosion <coughs> sheet erosion and gully erosion other than this there are also other shore bank erosion erosion near the ocean bed so sheet erosion and rill erosion and gully erosion are the ones three which are very prone now what has sheet erosion when there is no top soil no uh, when there is no vegetation in the top soil and there is a gentle slope the water in when it rains heavily instead of water percolating down going deep into the soil it tends to flow carrying away along with it the particles of the uh, soil because there is nothing binding it binding the soil together no uh, pores because of the roots that is why this water is not percolating down but rather it just flows as the, there is a splash of water the soil particles flow with the na uh, water so this type of it's just the beginning of erosion is called as sheet erosion immediately after this once this sheet erosion begins then finger like grooves start appearing there will be regions where the water flow will be very very smooth so finger like grooves start appearing and through these grooves the water flows finger like rills appear through which the water flows the third one is the gully erosion deep ravines have been developed and the water flows through these deep regions this is the one where which is leads to the formation of bad lands the land where practically no agriculture can be done uh, it's not really possible to do agriculture in this land because deep ravines have developed which do not allow the water uh, to stand there neither the soil to stand there and that is why the um, there is erosion work going on over there and it's difficult to reclaim this it takes years to reclaim this particular type of land so when we are speaking about water we are saying sheet erosion rill erosion and gully erosion wind erosion is the one where we have seen that in desert region because of the wind the particles of the sand and the particles get, get carried away leading to the so because the soil is not very firmly attached to the because of lack of vegetation cover there can be factors by man which can lead to soil erosion we have something like shifting agriculture where we keep cutting down the trees in order to do agriculture over there and that is how in shifting agriculture a patch of land is being cleared forested land this whole is forest this whole is forest and a patch in it is cut and then the trees are burned here the whatever patch of forest was here was burned here and then this land is utilized for agriculture they do agriculture for 3 to 4 years and then they leave the land barren so there may be processes like uh, faulty cropping faulty methods of cropping that may also lead to soil erosion like cropping on the if it is a hilly region 
cropping on the lower part in this manner instead of cropping uh, instead of plowing in, in this manner they plow in this manner so faulting uh, faulty cropping methods so these may be some of the factors by which the man himself will be contributing uh, to soil erosion now what are uh, the methods of controlling these we look into that but we just look into some of the regions where soil erosion is very very predominant if we look at the regions it is the outer himalayas which is the shivalik region shivaliks is the region where the soil erosion is very predominant then river banks are another one where <coughs> soil erosion is there hilly regions like nilgiris region is also region where soil erosion is a very predominant activity so you need to remember shivaliks river banks nilgiris are some of the regions where soil erosion is a predominant activity method of controlling when we look at the method of controlling we have method of controlling through water or method of controlling through wind when we say about wind we speak about shelter beds what they do is they tend to plant if this is the region where erosion is taking place they plant trees here rows of trees the rows of trees tend to stop the speed of the wind the trees are planted in rows so that they stop the speed of the wind they slow down the speed of the wind and the wind flows with a lesser speed or there can be other methods other than this other than shelter belt is that you do afforestation you plant the trees so that they can grip the soil in a much better way or there can be that we should stop indiscriminate cutting we should discourage people from cutting the trees every now and then so if you stop people from cutting the trees then also the soil will not be left without any vegetation there will be some of the other vegetation which is there and it will prevent the wind erosion for water erosion there are various methods that we can adopt like we can uh, do the deepening of the river bed deepening of uh, river bed or it could be the widening of the river bed the river bed is here and we make it a little more deeper so that this water doesn't flow out out during the rainy season or we make this river bed a little more wider this was the original bed we have made it a little more wider river bed so that the water is here itself it doesn't flow out it doesn't go out and flow so deepening of river bed or widening of river bed or it can be construction of dams to stop the flow of water the water can be stored and we can utilize it later on so we can be uh, construction there are other methods like contour plowing we are saying contour plowing when we are saying contour plowing it is a uh, in the hilly regions where it is <coughs> gentle slope we are just plowing along the contour we are not going plowing it like this going up and plowing but we are plowing along the contour at the same height round the hill we are plowing and cultivating the plants or it can be terrace farming terrace farming can be another way if you can if it is a very st steep slope you just and you need to do agriculture you need to develop these terrace so that the water doesn't flow out it just remains over here where the crop is and doesn't flow down and doesn't carry away the soil with it so we are just doing the agriculture and we are storing the water here itself we are calling it as terrace farming 
where the water doesn't flow out much easily and remains there itself. So terrace farming, contour bonding, construction of dams. Here also we have again other than this afforestation. So that the soil, we are saying afforestation, soil uh, is in the grip of the plants and it doesn't flow out very easily. <coughs> the water doesn't flow out very easily uh, by planting more trees we are preventing the soil from being uh, disturbed so afforestation is another method by which we can do the planting uh, so we need to remember what is soil erosion removal of the topsoil we need to remember the agents mainly water and wind and how would you control there can be a question like how will you control if it is water erosion? How would you control if it is wind erosion? Or um, soil erosion and name a region which has undergone this type of erosion uh, in the forest. Then other than this, there are other methods like we can prevent overgrazing. Prevent overgrazing. What really used to, how do we understand this? In earlier times, in the villages, there, when we used to have this grazing phenomena, when it used to go on, they used to really allot a piece of land where weekly the grazing will be done. Okay, we do it like this. This is a piece of land in agriculture where grazing is done. So what really happens, we used to call these areas as common property resource cprs we used to call them and within these resources the uh, cattle herders used to follow certain rules and regulations like they would say that they will plow the cattle in this part in the first week the next week second week in this part third week in this part and fourth week in this part so by the time the cattle herder comes back to this region this region has already got sufficient growth of grasses and the grass is deep enough so that the cattle can graze over here but with over a period of time these areas were taken over for development of schools or probably for development of hospitals dispensaries and these areas no longer existed in the villages as a result of which the <coughs> cattle rearing area was shifted from the village area to the periphery of the village now here they were it was a small belt of land around which the cattle grazing is done so even before the cattle can graze half of it the cattle herder moved to another land because this grass is not really replenished has not once again grown so because of that they try to start eating the grass and the roots are also even plucked because the grass is not really grown once again so we have to prevent this phenomena prevent over grazing or we have to control the faulty um, agricultural methods crop rotation has to be practiced so that certain regions where nitrogen is deficient that can be crop rotation means growing uh, two different kinds of crops say one is a crop which is leguminous crop pulses grown along with wheat so pulses give out nitrogen give back nitrogen to the soil so soil gets the nitrogen from these and uh, the cropping is done so with that we finish with the chapter on soils